Hi everyone, so welcome again. This is the episode number four. In this episode, my friend, I'm going to teach you how to test one of the most important component in electronics and the most confusing component that we find in every motherboard. This component, my friend, is the ceramic capacitor. Yes, my friend, the ceramic capacitors is not easy to test and is not easy to replace. Please stay tuned, watch the video until the end. If you want to know 100% for the first time how to test capacitors, very confusing, my friends. Even technicians, professional made errors on capacitor, ceramic capacitor testing. There are technicians that remove good capacitors because they don't know how to test it. In this video, you're gonna master ceramic capacitor testing. And by the way, my friends, I have decided to start testing components based on your comments. You get to choose what I test next. Just leave your suggestion in the comments and the component that gets the most mentions will be the one I test in the next video. I am reading all your comments, so don't hesitate to share your ideas. And please, if you enjoy these videos and want to support my work, the best way to say thank you for me is by liking and sharing the video. It really helps a lot. So guys, let's learn about electronics together at a high level, one component at a time. So before starting this episode, which component should I test next? Please enter comments. Okay, my friends, so we gonna test right now ceramic capacitors. Guys, this is the most, as I told you, the most confusing component. Literally, the most confusing component is ceramic capacitor. Why? Because it doesn't have just one test. No, ceramic capacitor has a special test in every circuit. Yes, in every circuit. So without wasting time, Let's test it right now. Okay. So my friends, of course, to test the ceramic capacitors, the same as electrolytic capacitors, as we have seen before, we can use the farad mode here, my friends. As you can see, we can select two microfarad, 200 microfarad, or we can use the continuity option. I will show you, my friends, both the farad mode and the continuity option mode. But the problem here, my friends, is that ceramic capacitors don't hold the value in farad. For example, my friends, for any electronic capacitor, for this one, for example, let's take any, any electronic capacitor for a computer. For this one, for example, my friend, as you can see over here, we have here 2200 microfarad, as you can see, 10 volts, even a smaller one. We have 100 microfarad, 25 volt. This is easy. But for ceramic capacitors, the problem is that they don't have the value here. So how can we find out and how can we fix this problem? Guys, I have the solution for this. Don't worry. Because also ceramic capacitors has a value in farad. The proof? Yes, I have to prove, my friend. So, if you look, my friend, to any ceramic capacitor in any circuit, this is basically ceramic capacitors. Okay, we have C196, we have 22 microfarad, 6.3 volt. This one, 0 0.1 microfarad, 16 volt. This one, for example, here, my friend, we have 1 microfarad, 10 volt. But the problem is that they don't hold the value here in the board. Even in computer motherboards, my friend, as you can see, here we have ceramic capacitors, but no value here. So how can we test these ceramic capacitors? I will show you everything. Just make sure you like the video, my friend. 
So in this case, we have two options or even three. The first one and the easiest one, if you have the schematic, you can refer to the schematic. Like this, for example, you find out this capacitor and you find that its value or its capacitance is 0.1 microfarad 16 volt. So if it is damaged, you will replace it with another one with the same characteristics. But if you didn't have my friend the schematic, easy. Don't worry, my friend. Don't worry. Just use the continuity option. This is the mode that solves every problem in terms of testing. Yes, the continuity option solves any problem. I will show you, my friend, in this masterclass how to use continuity option to find out or to test about 80% of electronic component. Yes, just stay tuned and be patient. Let's begin first and discover the farad option for ceramic capacitor. So guys, if I choose here, for example, let's choose the maximum value here, 200 microfarad, okay? And let's check in just randomly, my friend. You gotta understand everything. But first, I should move this probe here to this socket, okay? Do CX bridge, nice. And let's just, just randomly. I know what I'm doing. My purpose is to understand. Look, my friend, any capacitor, this one, for example, here. So if I check this one using Farad mode, let's one probe here, the other probe here. Do you see, my friend, I get 92.3. Means this capacitor is a 100 microfarad, okay? This is a 100 microfarad, okay? But I don't have 100 here. I should refer to schematic. So how can I know if this capacitor is good or not? But because it could be a 200 microfarad and because it is damaged, I get here just 92. So this is a problem. That's why my friend, for ceramic capacitors, avoid microfarad. If you, if you have the schematic, okay, you can use the farad option or mode. But if you don't have the schematic, you have to use the continuity option and you will fix the problem. This is the mode that experts use to test serum capacitors. I'll show you how. So guys, using the continuity option, of course, the same working principle. I can pick any capacitor here. Those capacitors, for example, okay, I should find charge and discharge. The same as electrolytic capacitor. Let's find out. Okay, my friend, I should move first. Sorry, I should move this probe to V volt ohm socket. Okay. Because the continuity, we should respect the city. Okay. So let's test this ceramic capacitor. Do you see, my friend? Charge. Fully charged. If I swap the probes, I will get discharge. Do you see? Discharged means this is a good capacitor. This is the simple way to test it, my friend. But please stay tuned because there is something very big in this video, my friend. This is not the only test for ceramic capacitor. So for in the motherboard for ceramic capacitors for USB circuit for the whole motherboard, this is the right testing. testing. You get charge and discharge, okay? As you can see, if we check those also, the same thing. Charge is charge. As you can see, my friend, this one also. Charge is charge. Okay? So those are good. But the problem here, my friends, is that we have exception. What is the exception is, please attention. The capacitors near the big chipset, like the CPU, like the PCH, has a special testing. For those, for example, if we check it using the multimeter, using the same working principle. Look, my friends. For example, let's test these capacitors that belong to the CPU circuit. Look, if we test this one, do you see? We have a low reading in the multimeter. Is this a short? For the beginner, this is a short, yes. If you are absolutely beginner, okay, we have to replace the short could be here. Okay, let's check the other one. Short, 
This one also? Shorted? Very confusing, my friend. But it's not a short. This is normal. Okay? Those capacitors are good. That's why I told you, my friend, the serum capacitors depending on the circuit where you test capacitors. If you test capacitors in the CPU circuit, this reading, this low reading here is good. This is not a short circuit. This is basically the resistance of the CPU. Do I have a proof? Yes, my friend, I have a proof. I will prove to you right now. Look, my friend, this is the, the proof. Please, of course, this is an old motherboard where I can remove the processor. But please don't worry. I want you to understand. I want you to understand. You don't need to remove the processor. No, just to understand. Look, this is the processor. This is the processor circuit. Let's check any capacitor near to the CPU circuit. This one, for example, guys, this is our capacitor. Look, we have four the same as the other motherboard you see guys we have four here is this a short no let's even test this tantalum capacitor also those are capacitor do you see five okay let's remove the processor and retest again so guys here the processor now is removed okay let's find out my friends so let me check again these capacitors where I find a low reading. Okay, let's see. Do you see guys in the multimeter? 66. This one also? Do you see guys? 66. Okay, if I put back the processor. Okay, my friend, the processor now is back. Let's check again. This serum capacitor, as you can see, again, low reading. This one also, low reading. Do you understand, my friends? So, that's why I told you that the ceramic capacitors near to the chipset means near to the CPU circuit, near to the PCH, near to the North Bridge and ICH for all the laptops has always a low reading. But other ceramic capacitors or other circuits like for example near to the battery connector near to usb connector near to the ram no they have a normal rating means you test it you get charge and discharge means the capacitors are serviceable are good but if you get a short zero means the capacitor is shorted guys i will show you a real shorted capacitor to understand so this motherboard basically is shorted and the short is in the cpu circuit i will make a special video for this to solve this problem but i want just to show you here guys we have seven capacitor so if we pick any short capacitor here for example my friend this one for example one probe here and the other probe here do you see my friend we have zero in the multimeter okay this is a rail short this one this is a rail short but this radian like this is not a short this is just the resistance of the cpu okay i hope that you understand and for this kind of motherboard for switch mode power supply motherboard or flyback motherboard always you will get a high rating when testing capacitors here for example we have many capacitors let's check this one do you see high rating charge discharge okay good this one high rating because here we don't have chipsets this one for example high rating okay my friends so this is how we can test ceramic capacitors let's say a little bit some theory in order to understand 100 persons so for ceramic capacitor of course asmd ceramic capacitor okay asmd ceramic capacitor okay guys it's symbol basically this is its symbol it's not polarized okay it's not polarized i told you my friend testing okay for testing so there is many kind of testing there is a normal testing 
when you test capacitors into switch mode power supplies or flyback power supplies like those for example my friends okay you have to get the normal reading a normal reading means a high value a high value in or a high reading in the multimeter but when it comes to chipsets okay chip sets like for the cpu gmch the pch the ich etc the capacitors near to the chipsets you will get a low reading even you will get a buzzer in the multimeter that's normal okay for that kind of capacitor it's normal when you get a buzzer and you get for example 0 4 or 0 3 like this but when you get zero like this means you have a short so guys i hope that you understand please as i told you just leave your comment and the component that gets the most mentions will be the one i test in the next video i am reading all your comments so don't hesitate to share your idea and your comments and of course if you enjoy the video and want to support my work the best way to say thank you for me is by liking and sharing the video it really helps me a lot so guys thank you very much please don't forget to subscribe and see you with another component